Hi, I'm Doug Eldridge, and this is the third vlog for DLEmedia.com, the division of the DLE Agency. Like all vlogs, this is shot exclusively through the use of flip cam. As the sun is rising on a Florida beach, I thought it was an appropriate time to stop and take a moment to look at the sun that's setting on the recent cycling season. Or, perhaps more relevant, the recent spat of drug accusations among top-level cyclists. Whether you go back to 2006 and the failed drug tests of American Tour champ Floyd Landis, or the seemingly constant hurricane of accusations that follow Lance Armstrong, or more recently, in the last 10 days, the accusations that three-time tour winner Alberto Contador tested positive for clenbuterol, a banned performance-enhancing substance. Whatever the accusation, and whomever the recipient of those accusations, the one common point of all of these accusations, from an agent's standpoint, is that there is a problem, there is a fundamental breakdown and the protections afforded riders or athletes of any sport but in the context of cycling afforded riders if and when they should ever fail a drug test or more recently should they have any irregular blood values since the whole concept of a biological passport has been instituted by the UCI. Now my concern as an agent is this. If my client were to test positive, be it for something as blatant as an anabolic steroid or something as simple as a clenbuterol, which is what Contador tested positive for. Clenbuterol, by the way, is an asthmatic medication. It's supposed to open the bronchial airways and make breathing easier, something which might make sense if you're riding competitively at 8,000 feet in the Alps, which you want something to make you breathe a little easier. But I'm not adding speculation or innuendo by any sense. Clenbuterol or even a tested supplement, a Cliff Bar that you could buy at a supermarket or at a GNC, the concern is that whether it's there deliberately or there accidentally, the riders should be afforded the same jurisprudence and procedural safeguards. And from my perspective, currently, those safeguards aren't in place. Number one, we're talking about a painfully slow process. Now granted, Floyd exhausted all of his possible appeals. Floyd went down with the ship, so to speak. It was over two years before he was officially stripped of his tour title and it passed to Oscar Pereiro. Now, Alberto Contador is begging, imploring the UCI and WADA to come to a safe and speedy resolution with his case, threatening that he'll even retire if he's implicated further or convicted. Whether he is or whether he isn't, whether you like him or whether you don't, whether you're an Armstrong fan or not, the fact remains the same. Were you in their position, you would want the same procedural safeguards. What do I mean by that? I mean the same protections, the same equivalent procedures as if you were accused of a crime in the United States criminal cycle. You'd want your right to present evidence. You would right, want your right to representation. You would want your right, guaranteed by the Constitution, to a speedy trial. All those things are non-existent right now. And perhaps scariest of most is that the onus is on the rider in marginal circumstances. I'm not talking about if you spectacularly fail a test. But if there is a marginal test, like your A is positive, your A sample is positive, your B is negative, or you test what they call a false positive, the onus is on the rider to prove their innocence. Something which, to any of us lawyers out there, is inherently backwards. And to any agent out there, is extremely disconcerting. Because it puts the onus and the responsibility on your client to prove their innocence, rather than the adjudicating body to prove your guilt backwards. That needs to change. Another change from my perspective is riders, whether American-based or international, need to unionize. I'm licensed and certified by the NFLPA, which is the NFL Players Association. That is who license agents. Cycling needs the equivalent, especially against the fabric of the antiquated process by which they are judged and ultimately punished. They need a collective voice and they need the strength in numbers, something which they do not currently have. But we'll discuss this more. Contador's case is certainly going to unravel even more. You're going to see a lot of headlines, unfortunately, surrounding Lance Armstrong. And we'll break down and analyze these. And I'll go into depth, explain not only the UCI rules, but the, the functionality and the procedures involved with the doping, the legal standpoint, the agent standpoint, and the PR and marketing standpoint. So be sure to tune back in to DLEmedia.com for a series of forthcoming blogs on this topic. I'm Doug Eldridge, signing off, thanking you for watching and encouraging you to tune back in. I look forward to seeing you soon.